Uh, like I said, I'm Tim Hoffman, and I'm from Protect Fauquier. You'll see many of us are in the red T-shirts tonight. Um, we are the county residents, um, and we're sort of outsiders here. This, this presentation, this series of presentations this evening are for ostensibly the town residents, those of you who vote for the town council and the mayor. So uh, we, I'm sure we have a few county residents in here, but this is directed for the town, and we are trying to inform you because it appears that many of you were, have been the last to hear about uh, this project and uh, what it entails. So, what we're doing tonight, this, uh, this meeting is designed to give you a comprehensive overview of what's going on with the, uh, the status of the Amazon Data Center, the proposal, where it is with the uh, uh, special use permit, uh, the attendant uh, electrical substation that would be located adjacent to that uh, data center, and then finally the, the above ground uh, power towers and, and uh, transmission lines that would be uh, that would run between um, the two different substations, one on the west side of Warrington and the other on the east side through the Vent Hill, New Baltimore area. Uh, the presentations uh, this, this evening will be divided into three parts. The first part will be a series of presentations. They'll be short and brief um, to give you a, a good sense of the basic uh, information that you need. Uh, we'll follow that with a question and answer period. And finally, at the end, we'll, uh, we'll ask you to, uh, to please take a look at the, uh, the various uh, pictures out here, and, uh, and you're free to ask the questions from our present, present presenters and the other experts in the, uh, in the, uh, um, in the uh, uh, front, front area here. Um, so we have presenters from all three groups in our coalition. Uh, the first is Amy Trotto in the middle. She's from the Citizens for Fauquier County. And she'll be up first, and she'll be talking about uh, the special use permit for the data center and how a data center would impact the town of Warrington. Following her is Spencer Snakeart, who's over there, uh, my far left, your right. Um, she will, uh, she's from Protect Falkier, and she will address the, uh, the impact of above-ground transmission lines required by the, the Amazon data center, including the, the running of our rural view sheds, the adverse impact on property owners, other direct costs and what we can expect if we don't stop Amazon's special use permit. Julie Bolthouse, to my immediate left, from the Piedmont Environmental Ca Council, will uh, close our presentations with key actions you as attendees uh, uh, can take to stop Amazon, and the electrical sub substation, and the power lines. Um, these, uh, I just want to say that uh, the three of these ladies have done, and, and in conjunction with lots of others in our coalition, have done uh, remarkable, extensive research on uh, the various aspects uh, of, this, of this issue before us. Uh, they've done an extensive review of the um, special use permit. Uh, they have uh, solicited uh, um, the Freedom of Information Act uh, things that, uh, that the government has uh, been doing. Uh, they've looked at public records. Uh, they've, uh, they've attended multiple information sessions, public information sessions, and have met uh, with uh, various citizens across the county and with other public officials in private meetings. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to, uh, well, one more thing, uh, I'm going to put in a paid political announcement. We have, uh, <laughs> we have a couple things. I know all of you all, I hope all of you all signed our petition when you came in, either in handwriting or in, uh, in a di digital form. Uh, I ask you, even if you sign the paper version of this, uh, please go to the digital version of it. The reason why is it really helps us to understand how we're getting the word out and who's actually paying attention to this issue. We, we now have the ability to, to geographic locate all of those who are participating, participating in, this, in this effort, and we can thereby say, oh, yeah, either the town of Warrington or New Baltimore or whomever, you know, that they're either not signing up and therefore we're worried about them knowing what's going on, or they're signing up and we should look at another area. So it's a very effective tool for us and it also gives us important information so that we can send emails out to you. So how many of you all have gotten emails so far from, from, the, uh, the, the, from us? 
All right, the, one of the things, if you thought, do you all think that was useful information? I hope. All right, I'm the guy that sends those things out, so I take your emails, and I'm the one that sends them out to you, and, and uh, I, hope, I hope you're finding them useful. I try, I try not to spam you. You know, my goal is once or twice a week, give you useful information, try to give it out in a, uh, in a uh, journalistic fashion so you don't have to read, you know, Gone with the Wind or, or you know, a book by some Russian author you know, that's a thousand pages long. So that's what I'm trying to do with that. Um, the second thing I would say is this is going to cost us money. Uh, and a as a veteran of the last Fight the Power Lines effort in 2017, we, s we, we spent a remarkable amount of money uh, to protect ourselves from power lines last time. So we're, 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 we're coming to you with our hats in our hands and, you know, please donate as you can. We'll have a donate button up sometime later this week, I'm hoping. And we, as you can see, we have uh, t-shirts out for sale and uh, signs. And whatever we make off of those sales, they goes, dire goes directly into our bank account and then it will support our future efforts uh, for, for, uh, for, this, uh, for this coalition. So without any further ado, I, I'm going to introduce Amy Trotto, and she's going to give you her spiel. Good to go. Good evening. The intent of this presentation is to give you a good overview of the project and hopefully avoid the element of surprise that many of us felt when the oversized bright red CubeSmart building seemed to just appear above the horizon one day and generated many panic calls to town hall expressing their dismay about the visual impact to the town. As you listen to the presentation, if any of the facts seem alarming or sound alarming, it's because we are informed. And that's what we hope to give to you tonight, the information. Amazon has filed a special use permit application with the town of Warrington for a data center, which has been processed for evaluation to the Planning Commission and could be decided as early as the Town Council's October 11, 2022 public hearing date. Amazon has requested connections to the town's water and facilities and needs a substation that will be built on site by Dominion for its electrical power. Dominion has represented many times that its transmission line is necessary to serve Amazon's data center, and if the data center is not built, the substation and transmission line is not needed. The town council alone has the power to decide if the data center is built. If town council denies Amazon's application, the data center, Dominion substation, and transmission line to Blackwell Road should be stopped. Amazon's application is for a special use permit. A special use permit is a permitting process required for uses or structures that inherently have features that may be harmful to the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Amazon, as all SUP applicants, are required to submit information, data, and studies relating to specific evaluation criteria outlined in the town's ordinances so that Town Council and the Planning Commission may determine if the use is compatible, if services are available, and what the impacts will be on the neighborhood and to the town's facilities. We'll touch on some of these areas here, but want you to know that we find Amazon's application to be wholly inadequate and incomplete and contend that it should not have been forwarded to the Planning Commission for review but rather should have returned to the applicant to get a, gather the uh, documents that are necessary for the proper evaluation. At the July 26, 22 work session, this is the only information prepared by town staff to inform the Planning Commission of this significant application. Staff's only re recommendation on this significant application is to hold a work session and apparently the Planning Commission is now tasked with trying to get the necessary studies and details about the project. The data center and substation are located on the elevated and at the most prominent parcel at the gateway to Warrington, and it will be seen and its impacts felt by not just Warrington residents, but by everyone in the county. 
The property is 41.7 acres. The area outlined in blue is the 33.6 acres that will be used for the data center, even though the building itself only encompasses five acres. The remaining 8.7 acres along Blackwell Road, immediately behind the Country Chevrolet, is where Dominion's electrical substation will be located. The Amazon's data center compound includes the 220,000 square foot building, which encompasses five acres. The building height is 37 feet, and 12 feet is added for the air chillers that are placed on top of the rooftop. There's eight feet security fencing surrounds. That's also uh, designated there in the red. 24-7 security lights on the data center, 15 parking spots, stormwater management pond in front, restricted access off of Blackwell Road. That's a guard gate. Outdoor diesel generators and backup generators, 50,000 gallons of diesel fuel stored in 10 50,000 gallon tanks, and Dominion's electrical substation and the transmission line connection. Not to insult anyone, but I honestly did not know what a data center was. So I included this. Um, essentially, you know, it's where data that I thought went to the cloud is stored. This doesn't cover all the criteria, obviously, but we've outlined what we consider to be the most important factors to consider when evaluating Amazon's data center application. It must be compatible with the comprehensive plan, the special use permit ordinances, and neighborhood and adjacent parcels. It must be able to be adequately served and not adversely impact the town's utility facilities and systems, which includes electrical, water, sewer, and stormwater. An impact analysis are required for each of these with the special use permit application, and none have been provided. The noise in sound and distance must be determined through a noise impact and abatement study, and it must not, not adversely impact adjoining neighborhoods. And the 12-foot air chillers on top of the roof and all mechanical equipment in the substation must be screened from adjoining properties and rights of way. You'll hear more about the visibility during the later presentations. Amazon's use must comply with the comprehensive plan, which is a guide for future development in the county. Warrington's plan is called Plan Warrington 24, and if you live in the town or follow the paper, you'll know that uh, this was a big deal. It included 16,000 individual engagements, over 3,100 hours of public comment and response, 13 public meetings, and over 12,000 social media posts, and involved the youth through a student survey. The student survey said they wanted community gathering spots, walkability, a sense of place, very similar to what adults that live in Warrington surveyed wanted. The plan was adopted in April on April 13, 2021, about the same time Amazon placed a contract for the purchase of the Gateway location property. Under the plan, Amazon's Gateway location is located in the new town Warrington Character District, which is planned to be developed as a mixed use of commercial and residential. That's in the uh, purple area. Amazon's mixed-use property is planned for a work-live play environment to be enjoyed by all residents, to create a feeling of belonging among residents, and revitalize the existing shopping areas and residential neighborhoods while always preserving Warrington's unique small-town character. 
This is a picture of the guard gate entrance to Amazon's compound located off of Blackwell Road and is used to illustrate that none of the desired uses and opportunities planned for this property will be possible if town council approves Amazon's data center compound application. This is drone footage of Warrington substation off of Old Auburn Road. And if you can imagine this 50 feet higher, it is likely representative of the view off of Blackwell Road that will be visible from all vantage points. This is also used to demonstrate how the Amazon's data center compound is not compatible with our shopping centers and residential neighborhoods and certainly won't work to preserve and revitalize them as is intended under Plan Warrington 2040. In addition to the comprehensive plan, other key considerations are the utility impacts. Because Amazon and Dominion both refuse to provide Amazon's load letter or the amount of power required by the data center, we've used the only number provided, which is the range of power provided by Dominion at a stakeholder meeting. The range is between 30 to 90 megawatts. One megawatt powers 200 homes. So the power brought in will be the equivalent of power in 6,000 to 18,000 homes. Amazon also has not provided any numbers on water usage demands or impacts to the town's water infrastructure, even though this information is a required criteria and has specifically been requested. It took four months for Amazon to even reveal that its intended sources of water, or that it has intended sources of water, as in the original application, Amazon merely said it needs a water tap and it won't use water for cooling. After four months, Amazon reveals that it will use water for domestic use of the 220,000 square foot building, humidification, landscaping, fire water storage tanks, and electric power requirements. But again, no usage numbers and its impact cannot be properly evaluated. This is very significant because a town's engineer with the Department of Public Works and Utilities has advised that the town does not have excess water capacity to support industry and data centers for non-potable uses. So not only are we concerned about the water and other utility impacts, but also that Amazon is not taking the town's permitting process seriously. Data centers uh, are serious business, and the poor precedent that this sets and low bar for future applications is also a concern. Noise is another significant factor to this application that we know little about. The data center must never lose power, and to ensure that doesn't happen, there are tens of outdoor diesel engine generators and backup generators available in a power ad outage. The generators are fueled by the uh, diesel fuel tanks and are tested twice a month. The data center is cooled by air chillers that are on the rooftop and they run 24 seven. In its recent mission, Amazon just revealed the results of a geotech study that blasting may be required to prepare the site for the data center. Noise is a significant factor, and although required and requested, Amazon has failed to provide a noise abatement study to determine the sound, level, and distance it travels and impacts of the noise generators. Again, not requiring this sets a bad precedent, low bar, and it appears to be protecting Amazon and not the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens. If you have concerns or have concluded, as we have, that this is the wrong use in the wrong place, then please contact town council through email, letter, or by speaking at the public hearings and take our handout. And although this is beyond the scope of my presentation, we want to alert you to the Board of Supervisors meeting tomorrow night, as at the last public hearing before retiring, uh, Supervisor Granger, who represents Center District, which is where uh, this is located, has uh, submitted an initiation 
to um, excuse me, initiating a resolution to place the town's boundary line adjustment agreement to bring 1,744 acres of county land into the town limits up for hearing the following month. We would submit this is inconsiderate of Mr. Granger since leaving nor prudent, excuse me, we submit that this is not very considerate of Supervisor Granger nor prudent for the Board of Supervisors to allow. As a boundary line adjustment of this magnitude involving three different areas in the county will be very involved and complicated and Supervisor Granger's resignation leaves the board busy with filling his position and it would be reasonable and appropriate to give the interim supervisor time to assimilate before imposing such a monumental task on his or her lap. Thank you very much. Next up is from. Thank you, Amy. Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for coming out tonight, especially on such a hot, rainy, miserable night. So appreciate you being here. Um, I'm Spencer Snaker with uh, Protect Fauquier. Our full name is the Coalition to Protect Fauquier County. Um, we're behind the, the movement, perhaps, that you've seen throughout the town with the signs that say, Stop the Power Towers much like this. So um, we are a group of citizens. We're just a group of citizens that form that have come to know about the project and have been um, organizing and coming together out of our concern for the impacts of this project. And so that's very much what I'm going to be speaking to this evening. Um, and this is very much a grassroots effort on our part. In fact, the gentleman is in the room today who came literally knocking on my door saying, hey, did you know about this? And I did not. And the power lines, two of the routes are slated to go literally right through our property. Um, 10 acres of solid woods that would either be divided in half or cut down the property line with what's to come. So I'm going to speak more to that. Um, so the, the main topics I'm going to speak to this evening are about how we believe transmission lines will destroy our rural landscape, um, not just uh, the immediate, but the whole surrounding of the town. Uh, obviously, those of you even who live in town come and go through the county. Probably many of you commute to work in other places. So we'll be speaking to the impacts in the surrounding areas. Um, we believe transmission lines, uh, in fact, we know that transmission lines will decrease property values, and we're going to give you some visuals to see uh, what can be expected of how these will look. Um, and also a big thing we want to make sure everybody understands is that the, the SCC, which is the State Corporation Commission, they're located in, Vir in Richmond, Virginia, they will choose the transmission line path. Um, it is not local. We can't make it a condition of burying the lines. Um, some people have contacted me saying, hey, it just seems logical. Why don't we just make condition of the um, approval of the special use permit conditional upon burying the lines on the shortest distance? And that is not even a possibility legally. The legislation doesn't allow for that. So the town can't say, well, we approve it if you bury the lines along this particular route. The SCC has the final say. So I'll say, I'll give you more details on that in a minute. Um, and the big thing also is this is all coming at all of our cost um, for Amazon's benefit. So let's go into each of these just a little at a time. I wanted to start off, this is an amazing picture, isn't this? I found this on the internet. I, I, I didn't properly get credit for who the photographer is of this, but beautiful picture, I think, that reflects why many of us have chosen to live in this area. Um, I was born in Fairfax, grew up there, went to Fairfax County Public Schools, and when it was time for me to buy my first home, I cho chose to move out this way, despite the very long commute to my job at a government agency at the time in D.C. Um, that I was a contractor for, um, because of the magic of what this area is. And I think many of us, that's why we live here, because of the beauty and the rural surroundings and the peace and serenity and the way of life here. Um, I've had friends from other areas who've come to visit me that have said to me, I swear I feel my blood pressure drop when I turn down your road. It's just so peaceful and beautiful here. Um, and before I bought my current home, I used to drive 20 to 30 minutes out of my way to drive through parts of Fauquier County um, along Vint Hill Road because it was just so beautiful. So Protect Fauquier, the group that I'm here representing today, is not, I want to make clear, we're not just fighting for not in my backyard. We're fighting for not in any of our backyards because we believe this does not have any place in the county, particularly for this purpose. 
So transmission lines, as I said, we believe will destroy the rural landscape to and from the town. These pictures are mock-ups that we had an artist, and it's an artist rendition that is done to scale. Um, in fact, the, the person with our group that was involved in this was very particular to the foot to try to make sure that this was accurately to scale of 110 foot tall steel power towers um, that will be going through. This is along Route 29 North, a view of that, um, and also 29 South. So, and note that this, the red arrow there is showing the, um, the area we saw in the prior presentation, the big field that's surrounded by 1729 and, what's the other road, 1729 and? Blackwell. Blackwell, oh. thank you. Uh, but the other main road into town is 15, thank you. Yes, thank you. So that big swath raised up of land, um, this doesn't include a mock-up of the data center, but we need to keep in mind the data center and substation would be in this view as well. Um, this would involve miles of huge industrial towers. These are actual photos, not mock-ups, of towers that have recently been installed in Prince William County down Vent Hill Road. Um, and those of us that drive Vent Hill regularly were horrified when we saw these and go in and said, what is with the monstrosities of these steel towers? And these are what we would be looking at um, with the imp implementation of this Amazon data center. Um, transmission lines decrease property values and enjoyment of property. Um, you, these, by the way, our slides will be available. Is it going to be on PEC's website? We, we may upload them also on Protect Falk here as well. Um, these have links to, to articles if you want to read more information. So this quote was from an article by the National Association of Realtors that says power lines have been proven to lower property values by as much as 40%. There are at least eight town neighborhoods, town of Warrington neighborhoods, that would see the currently proposed power towers and lines, and three of those eight would see both directions. So whether it goes down through Meats Road um, or up to the Wheeler Station off Vent Hill, three of those would see both. And by the way, we could potentially end up with both. The SCC could say, well, we're just going to, while we're at it, go ahead and put both in to make sure that everything's covered. Um, the eight town of Warrington neighborhoods impacted are listed here, and this is just one photo of one of those neighborhoods. This is a, a view from the Highlands neighborhood. Um, one of our Protect Fauquier members is a realtor with a drone and was awesome to send up the drone to 110 feet um, where these expected towers will be based on the currently proposed lines. So this camera is from what would uh, uh, essentially be the top of one of those towers. So if you can see a house, a window, or a deck from this photo, which is a little hard to tell because of the perspective, but you can see this whole neighborhood in here. Many, many of those windows are, would be looking out at these lines, and there are many neighborhoods that would have the same kind of impact, um, as well as many county neighborhoods and rural homes would be impacted. Again, these are just a couple examples. Same thing with the drone going up to 110 feet. Um, and you can see, I mean, some of these homes are incredibly big, beautiful, probably these people's dream homes that they may have invested their, uh, you know, lifelong savings in or invested everything into, essentially, that the bulk of their net worth is tied up into these homes that they could be losing 40% on. Um, some of this one right here just really blows my mind with how close some of these would be, just hanging out on the deck, listening to the the power lines. This is a real photo, and I zoomed in because the, it's, it's a little dark and hard to see. So the one on the left was a picture from the road. In the red box is a very large, beautiful colonial custom home in the scale of these huge power towers going down from this new line that came off of Vint Hill Road. And I zoomed in some just so you could see I wasn't making up. It's still a little hard to see with the lighting. But this is a, a big, nice, custom-looking colonial home. Um, dwarfed, literally dwarfed by these power lines, and this is what we would all be dealing with. Um, so just, you know, to kind of wrap that up as far as the, um, the property values, you know, given the alternatives, <laughs> what would you choose? Dominion likes to say, oh, we have studies that show actually the property values went up by 20% after power lines were there. Well, that's probably because the market as a whole went up by 40 or 50% perhaps. <laughs> When you compare comparable homes and comparable neighborhoods, those with power lines versus those without, it's been shown to be up to a 40% loss of value. So moving on now to the SCC, again, the State Corporation Commission in Richmond has the final say of where these lines will go. Um, by the way, Amazon is really making an effort to make it sound like 
the transmission lines have nothing to do with them. If anyone was at the most recent planning commission meeting, the working session, um, when Mr. Foote, the attorney for Amazon, was being questioned, some questions were asked about the transmission lines. He said, oh, I don't know anything about that. This is, you know, the, our, our, our application is just for the special use permit for the data center. So everything they speak to about the data center is, oh, it's going to be, have trees around it and you won't even see it, which we don't believe is true anyway. But you can't consider the data center without also considering the transmission lines. So the SEC in Richmond has the final say. If the town approves the special use permit, the SUP, um, they will have no idea upon approval where those lines will go. So it's not like they can say we approve based on or only if. If they approve, it's approved, and then the SEC decides. The SEC has the final say and in the past has determined completely different routes than Dominion or other local groups have recommended. So a couple things to speak to here. One is that at the Dominion meetings, if any of you have attended those, um, Dominion said, oh, we're recommending this particular route is in favor and we're recommending underline. They can recommend all they want. I, my personal opinion is that's a little marketing thing on their side to make it sound like they're looking out for us, the local citizens. Um, they might be recommending an underground line, but the SEC will decide, and it is very rare that the SEC grants underground lines, um, supposedly due to the increased cost. Um, to, again, Dominion will lead us to believe that it's 10 to 15 times overground, um, but based on past cases, we think it's more accurate to probably say two and a half to three times. Um, but still, the SEC will say due to the extra cost um, that they keep it down. You'll find out more in a minute who pays that extra cost. I'll give you a guess. Um, oh, also here I mentioned the Haymarket case. I do want to reference that um, our nearby town, neighboring town of Haymarket, Virginia, right up 29, um, went through a situation very similar to this in 2015, I believe it was. Um, had a multi-year fight because they said from the start, we will support one line only that we'll, we'll be in favor of and nothing else. And um, I don't recall if Dominion, Julie, do you remember, was Dominion sort of in agreement on that as far as the recommendation? I don't okay I don't I don't I don't know all the details of that but I do know from the woman who was heading up that coalition um, that she said we stood behind one path and Dominion I believe maybe recommended another one and the SCC chose something completely different so even when Dominion and local groups say this this is what will be in favor of they can still do excuse me still do what they want um, as I mentioned the SEC almost never approves underground lines largely because they attribute to the cost um, we will need legal representation to have any voice in SCC hearings. So for us to even get to speak up or have a say or be heard or considered by the SCC will require legal representation. And um, I believe, again, the Haymarket Group spent, I, I think, over $100,000 just in legal representation fees. Um, so again, as Tim mentioned earlier, when we're asking for donations, we're not taking salaries or taking money for ourselves to be behind this. We're all doing this out of... Um, just our own time and effort and our passion about this project and the money will go toward things like um, that representation. A couple of the big things to keep in mind here is again, the lines will not likely be underground, not unless or without a massive long and expensive fight. The town cannot require it as a condition of special use permit re approval. Um, and it all comes at our cost. It all comes at our cost for the benefit of Amazon. So um, a few things here about our, our cost. Um, distribution lines versus transmission lines. Um, this is gonna be important in a second. The picture on the left here shows distribution lines. These are what we see all over the area that are like the wooden, maybe 30 to 50 at the most foot tall poles um, to distribute power from a substation to a, a user or a customer. Um, when I built my home, I had to pay a portion of that money to the power company to distribute power to my land that was previously raw, undeveloped land because they said, well, sure, we'll give you power, but if you want it, you got to pay for it. Transmission lines, which is the one on the right, again, this is one that recently went in off of Ant Hill Road in Prince William County. Um, transmission lines are um, generally presented as being for more massive use, like not just one customer, but it's for the, the good of the people kind of thing. Um, Amazon is requiring a transmission line because of the load, because of the volume of power that's being delivered. If it was to be transmission uh, distribution lines to them, I believe they said it would be at least four distribution lines in parallel needed. And so instead of four plus distribution lines, they're doing a transmission line, which now changes who pays for it. Because Dominion, apparently, there are, I believe, laws in place 
I'm, I'm, I'm not the legal person, so I'm this, some of this is going from memory from prior conversations about the legal aspect, but Dominion cannot charge the customer for the power for the transmission line. The only thing really here that distinguishes in this case is it distribution or is it transmission is the load. It's only because of the volume of power that it's a transmission line, but ultimately this is really a, distribu a, a distribution for them. In the Haymarket case, they referred to this as Amazon's private extension cord, and I believe it's very much the same thing here. Because this uh, Dominion has said that if the special use permit is denied, then there's no need at this time for this new transmission line. Now, that's not to say we won't be having a similar fight in the future, particularly if more data centers are coming. Julie's going to speak to that in a couple minutes. Um, but at the moment, Dominion has said if the, SU, if the special use permit is denied and Amazon does not get to build and use this uh, data center in this location, then there's currently no need for the transmission line, therefore very much making this another one of Amazon's private extension cords. At a height of 110 feet tall, clearing a 100-foot wide path, which I don't know why they even need that much because I don't think even a 747 could take down any of these lines, but uh, apparently they want it very clear from any trees or anything else. Um, and running approximately three to eight miles long, this will be done under the guise of eminent domain, even though it's really only to serve Amazon. So um, many folks that own private property in the area and will be having these power lines come through and reducing our direct property as well as those that are in neighborhoods and having their views reduced, it's all under the guise of eminent domain, so Amazon can get what they want. Um, it's paid for by rate increases, by the way, from all Virginia rate payers, meaning anyone who uses power in the state of Virginia. Um, certainly Dominion users, but I recently was told that it's not just Dominion, it's all power users because the, the grid essentially is shared. So even though like I personally am a Novec user, my rates would go up too. So all of, excuse me, all of our rates and even out into rural way beyond the edges, out to the edges of Virginia and beyond, will be paying for this, not Amazon, despite this being a multi-million dollar infrastructure project for them. All for $1.45 trillion Amazon's benefit. I just I looked that up a couple days ago in preparation. It was $1.42 trillion. Today it's $1.45 trillion. So apparently they had a good opening to their week. Um, so this is all done for Amazon's benefit. P.S. Amazon also gets tax breaks out of this deal. I believe that part of the negotiation is they don't pay property tax the way the rest of us do. Um, since then, and because it all comes at our cost, they have zero incentive to innovate. So these data centers very much remind me of the old computers from the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, where you hear about these computers that took up the entire floor of a building, or an entire building for that matter. Um, data centers, I believe, are the next wave of these old, someday will be soon to be outdated centers that are currently taking over the landscape in Northern Virginia. And they have no reason to try to do anything differently or more efficiently or smaller footprint or less impact because we're the ones paying for it. So don't be fooled by promises of a golden goose. I'm almost done here, and then I'm going to hand it off to Julie. But just a couple last things. Um, the promise of data centers and why Virginia and our local counties, particularly Loudoun was the first one to really jump on the bandwagon, but others as well, um, have, have been wooing some of these data centers in, is the belief that increased tax revenue will bring millions and limitless ongoing tax dollars um, that would be worth the cost. But prior localities have been changing their tune. So Loudoun, again, these are all linked to articles if you want to read more on these when you have access to these slides. Loudoun recently faced a $60 million data center tax shortfall that they planned for in their budget. They're spending their costs for their schools and other things um, and came up with a $60 million shortfall because what was expected of these data centers to be paying in taxes um, was not what they thought because the data centers now there was recent legislation um, from the data center industry changing what they can be taxed on so the belief initially was well they're gonna have to replace their equipment and that's gonna be new equipment and so the we're gonna have all this revenue coming in but instead it's on uh, components that are getting replaced not whole machines and equipment and so therefore not the ongoing tax golden goose stream that it was thought to be um, Prince William County Finance Department, these are headlines from articles, said data centers tax revenue would fall short of projections. 
Um, Arizona has been a huge area to do data centers. There was an article saying unsustainable, resource hungry, and loud. Why Chandler, Arizona wants to ban more data centers. And Loudoun County, Virginia just recently proposed major changes to data center development, putting limitations on where they can be and how they can be and so forth. So, you know, this would be our first, I believe, here in Fauquier County. Am I correct with that? But no, 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 not the first data center, but in town, certainly the first in town. Yes. Yeah, so. Well, so so um, anyway, this, is, this will be really setting a precedent, and Amy alluded to this, I believe, in her presentation on saying, you know, we're setting the bar very low for future centers coming in. Um, we need to be aware that this is maybe not as great of an opportunity for tax revenue as, as we're being told that it is. The best way to stop Amazon and stop the power towers is to urge the Warrington Town Council to deny the special use permit, deny the SUP. Um, we believe it is the wrong place and the wrong use for our town. I'm going to turn it over to Julie Boldhouse of PEC for the big picture. Thank you. I don't know if there's anything left to say, but <laughs> I'm Julie Boldhouse. Um, I'm the Land Use Director with Piedmont Environmental Council. And I want to go over just the big picture so you can understand where this fits in the grander scheme of things. Amy's gone over you know, the, the actual site proposal, and Spencer's gone over the transmission lines, but I want to talk a little bit about how all these things kind of fit together in the grand scheme. So in our grid, we have load, which is basically this building, it's the homes we live in, it's the schools, it's the hospitals, anything that's using electricity is the load. And then that load is usually a fraction of what a data center is. As, as Spencer already mentioned, um, these data centers use 30 to 90 megawatts of power. And that is one megawatt is the equivalent of about 250 homes. So what does that mean in Warrington? What that means is that the single data center, if it is the small end, 30 megawatts, we don't know what the exact load is for, um, it's undisclosed, what the exact load that they're asking for. But let's say it's the low end of what Dominion has told us is the usual demand for data centers. That equates to two times the residential development that currently exists within the town of Warrington. So we will be using two times more energy going to a single point, which is that data center. And that gets to the transmission aspect. The reason they need their own private transmission line and their own substation is because to get that much power to a single user, you would have to run a number of distribution lines, as they just said. I actually think it might be more than four, but it would be a number of distribution lines. So they usually use transmission lines to get that power over to them. So they have their own private transmission line and they have their own substation because the substation is what converts that energy that is coming on the transmission line down to distribution level energy, which then connects up to all the, the data center um, components or parts of the building. Then you have to have more power to feed all of this. So obviously we have major data center growth going on throughout the Northern Virginia area. Loudoun County has had record build of data centers within the past year. Prince William County is building data centers. I'm sure if you've read the newspapers at all, you've seen all the different data center sites that have been approved in Noakesville and um, Haymarket. And obviously, they're also looking at Digital Gateway, which is a huge one, which would literally um, be 27 million square feet of data center, as much data center space it, that is existent in all of Loudoun County. So how do you generate power for all of those data centers? Well, you have to have new generation sources. And that brings me to my next slide. This is showing you what our grid currently looks like. And I'll actually add in a link, being that we're going to share these presentations. I like Spencer's idea. I can put a link in there so you can check out this site on your own. But the larger black lines are the 500 kV lines. And the smaller black lines are the 230 kV lines, generally. And what you'll notice is obviously Fauquier is there in the center. Let me see if I can get my pointer here. So obviously there's Fauquier. This is kind of where our data center is proposed, is about right there. But what I want to point out is all the generation sources on this map. The grid is complex. It's not just simply we need to get power from south to north. It's power coming from all different directions, and there's all different sources of power. So the blue dots that you see there with the little flame, that's our natural gas sources. 
the brown is petroleum, the um, yellow is solar facilities. Um, if you saw north further, I don't have it on this map, I don't think, but if you looked further, you'd see coal, and down in the south at Lake Anna, you see nuclear. So there's all different power sources, and the energy is moving east, west, north, south. It's moving everywhere throughout this grid. So it's not just simply a matter of we just need to get power from here to here. They, they can move power around in all sorts of different directions. And generally what Dominion likes to do is just build out the grid as much as they can. The more, the more, infra or the more connection points, the more loops, the more um, production they have, the more they, they are able to, um, you know, honestly pay back their shareholders that 10% that they automatically get when they build this infrastructure. And also, uh, I would point out that what prevents them from doing that is the checks and balances of the SEC approval. So there is a process that they have to go through uh, when they're building out this new infrastructure so that they don't build excessive infrastructure. And that approval process is the SEC. And that's why one of the things that we we were pointing out about undergrounding the line, one of the reasons the SEC doesn't like to underground the line is because it is more expensive and because that cost does get transferred on to the ratepayer. So very, very, very rarely do they actually um, choose to underground the line because they want to protect us, the ratepayer. That being said, obviously, when you're talking about a local community, that's a huge impact on the local community. All right, now I wanted to point out this little area right here. This is actually Loudoun County. And you'll see, I want to point out how this is a 230 KV line coming off of the major 500 KV line that comes up just east of Leesburg. And this little 230 KV line, you can see it goes off into all these little spurs and onto all these little substations. Now, what's right there? I don't know if anyone is familiar with the area, that is Data Center Alley. Now, what I, the reason I wanted to point that out is because the way that we used to plan for data centers back when Data Center Alley was most like, because just so you know, Data Center Alley is almost built out at this point. Um, it is, it's dozens, not even dozens, it, it's a lot of data centers, right? I would say around 40 plus data centers clustered in a single area that is generally industrial, office space. There's very little residential, mostly around the edges, but they clustered it. And because they clustered it, all of these transmission lines, you can see how clustered the little transmission spurs are to each one of those substations. So each one of those substations are serving a cluster of data centers. Each one of those substations are serving four to six data centers off of each of those little spurs. So there's dozens of data centers in that little area. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. So the point is that's how we used to plan for our data centers. But now what we're starting to see is we're starting to see more and more proposals in areas that are residentially zoned and planned for, areas that are commercially zoned and planned for. In Prince William County, we're starting to see some commercial spaces um, get converted. We're starting to see them out in rural areas. If you follow the news, you might have seen Marvel Data Center down in Culpeper County. Well, they have two more in the works down in Culpeper County in pretty close proximity. We have the Atatech um, Data Center. So what we're starting to see is, honestly, data center sprawl. And part of the reason we're seeing that sprawl is because we are subsidizing the infrastructure that they would need to connect up to these, these sites. So you're getting these little clusters just scattered all throughout um, places like Prince William County, Prince William, Culpeper. Everybody wants in on, on the um, potential revenue that they see from data centers. So this is what we're seeing proposed right now. Everybody's pretty familiar with this. But here's what is concerning, is not only are we talking about the Amazon site right now, there's a boundary line adjustment being, well, first let me step back and say, some of you may have seen the newspaper article um, about the Dobson properties. So those are being advertised out in magazines like Data Center Frontier as possible data center space because one of them is already industrially zoned. Actually, I think two of them might be already industrially zoned. But this one definitely is. It's the old wire factory, if you're familiar walking on the um, greenway. This is industrially zoned, and it potentially could come in with a data center proposal. 
They need fiber, but that's pretty easy to address. So they could get their fiber line and they could come in with a data center proposal. And as I said, Dobson is advertising that on data center frontier and trying to get um, interest. But we also have a boundary line adjustment coming from the town of Warrington that has been sent over to the county. And this boundary line adjustment is what is shown in my little candy cane red here. This is what is being proposed by the town that they would like to see added into the town. Now, there's lots of explanations for other parts of this. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm only going to talk about the southern portion. The southern portion, which is these purple areas down here, that was described in their letter to the county as industrial. They would like to turn that area into industrial. So the question that we're raising and that we're concerned about is, is this going to be the next cluster? Is Warrington going to be a cluster of data centers? Because the METS road substation, the substation that would have to connect up to Blackwell, is located right here. So it's in very close proximity to these sites. And it's not far-fetched to think that the industrial development that the town has proposed in their letter is possibly more data centers. All right. All of that being said, I want to go ahead and just go through some of the key points. We gave you a handout, and all these key points are described better on that handout, so check them out. But the first thing I want to say is that this has not been approved yet. This is not a done deal. The special use permit has to be approved by the town council. If they deny it, then we don't have, well, Dominion does not have a load request any longer for this project. They don't have a load to move forward with the SEC as to why they need this project. As Spencer already said so well, they're not going to pay for it either. Dominion's not, or uh, Amazon is not going to pay for this. We're going to pay for it. The ratepayers are. And also the project very likely will industrialize, especially if we see these other sites. But let's just pretend those aren't going to happen right now. Let's just think about just this site and the transmission line. This is going to industrialize the Eastern Gateway into the town of Warrington. Obviously, all these things. We did a viewshed analysis to see where would you see this from because we were not satisfied with the viewshed analysis that was done by the applicant, by uh, John Foote's office. So we did our own. And the way that we do this analysis is we take li LIDAR data of the vegetation and the buildings um, that are present and then we put in the 37-foot building. We did not add the 12 feet on top for the equipment. We just did the 37-foot building. And the dark orange shows you where it is highly visible from. It fades into lighter orange colors where it's less visible. You might only see a small portion of it. But in the dark or orange portions, you will see that you will see this data center fairly clearly. And also keep in mind, we did clear all the vegetation for the limits of disturbance. So within the site plan, generally when they put in these data centers, they come in and they clear everything. And on their site development map, they have this area called the limits of disturbance. So we did remove all the vegetation through there. But we kept the slivers of vegetation that they said that they would keep along 17, 29, and 15 um, in Blackwell Road. But still, this is what you can see. It's going to be very highly visible, especially along the roadways and from a lot of these neighborhoods. It's also extremely unlikely, as Spencer said, that we would be able to get this underground. I will tell you that it is very, very, very rare for the SEC to decide to put um, it underground. The only reason the Haymarket line, just a small portion, not even the entire line, but the Haymarket spur line that went out to the data center, the only way that they were able to get it through was uh, because there was so much public pressure. You have a higher population, first of all, in Prince William County, keep that in mind, and because they were able to get Tim Hugo to carry a legislative fix in the Virginia Clean Economy Act 2018 that he was able to negotiate with other legislators and get put in there. It would be extremely difficult for us to utilize that or to try to do that again, especially considering the amount of data center development that is going on in our region right now and how many other communities are going through the exact same thing as you and they don't want their transmission lines overhead either. So it would raise the question for the rest of the legislators, the General Assembly, well, what about my town? And it becomes very difficult to say, to, to figure out where those funds would come from. Now, 
Last point, if you build it, they will come for two reasons. I think we would get more data centers. One is new infrastructure capacity is available once you put that line in there. Transmission lines get the people underneath of them. First of all, like Spencer pointed out, you've just reduced their property value, first of all. And second of all, the people who are underneath those transmission lines say, hey, why can't I connect up? And if you don't think that happens, look, look up Prince William Digital Gateway and see what's happened there because that is all, that is exactly what the argument is, is you've ruined my property and I have a transmission line overhead and now we should have the right to build data centers in rural areas. So transmission lines oftentimes add capacity for data centers. And then also it sets a precedent for the town and count. It sets a precedent to, well, it sets a, a precedent for the applicants who come in in the future that they think, hey, this town and this county is interested in this level of economic development and this type of economic development. This is a great place for me to try to do business. So you're going to get interest that way too. So is there anything you can do? This sounds really dreary and depressing, I'm sorry. I always get accused of being the most depressing person presenting. So I apologize if I'm depressing. But yes, there is something you can do. In fact, you are the only thing we can do. And that is pressure. It's pressure on the town council. It's people like you calling them and talking to them, signing the petition, getting all those names on there, um, having coffee with them and explaining what the concerns are, informing your neighbors, attending the town meetings and just being present, wearing the red shirt around town so people ask you, stop what? Um, make a donation to help with the signs like um, and the t-shirts and the, the legal representation costs, and writing a letter in the local paper. Write those op-eds and, and get it out there. This is a long road, though. I'm not going to tell you we're going to fix it tomorrow because we're not, unfortunately. It's going to take endurance, and um, just the upcoming dates I want to point out, one is tomorrow night, and that's the initiation of the boundary line adjustment by the county. The county is going to decide if they're going to initiate the decision to do the boundary line adjustment. That doesn't mean they're deciding on it. Um, it means that they're initiating it, and we'll have a public hearing probably next month to consider it. So going out, telling them, we don't think you should be ready to initiate this. Uh, we think that the, t the county should be pushing back on the town um, on this request. And then the Town Planning Commission work session on the 23rd is another great one to attend. And then watch for the next um, upcoming three, which is the public hearing on the boundary line adjustment, the Planning Commission public hearing, and the Dominion SCC filing, which will be coming up probably in the fall. I just want to leave you with one last thing. The tide is turning on data center developers seeking to locate in inappropriate areas where new transmissions are required. This is an article from July 21st, 20, uh, 20, this year, <laughs> sorry. Um, and it's, it's about what Spencer mentioned. Loudoun County is proposing new rules on data centers because of what's been happening. We're having data centers out in residential areas. People are starting to get upset. It's no longer just data center alley where you know, it's not impacting anyone. We're starting to just sprawl and put these data centers in all different locations where it's very impactful and transmission lines are being built. So they made a decision that they want to keep data centers off of Route 7 where there's no more power infrastructure to support them because they don't want to see another transmission line on Route 7. They already unfortunately put one over my little town of Leesburg. But they um, are trying to stop putting it over the rest of Route 7. Now, finally, the last thing I want to say is Fauquier doesn't have to accept new transmission lines and substations in highly impactful areas to have data centers. And plus... Data centers aren't the only type of economic development. And I would argue as a planner that they're not the appropriate type of economic development for a town. Because as Amy was describing with the comp plan, what you want in a town is a vibrant, livable space where you can walk around, where you can um, recreate and play and work. And that's what the comp plan describes. By putting in a fenced-in area where you can't have any access, there is no trails through the community, there is no... Um, connection to the broader community and it doesn't help with economic development next door. There is no business that benefits from being next to a data center. While as if you did have some sort of mixed use or commercial use or even residential, those things can build off of each other and benefit from each other. So I just want to say yes, data centers do bring in some revenue, but is it worth it? Is it worth it in this location? Is this the right place? Or should we be better planning for where they should be? Thank you.